And as you might notice, I haven't quite had time to um, to do the slides for this talk, so I'll be working from also from the fractals notes. But usually, my slides are pretty much just a, a copy of them. Okay, so on Monday we looked at how what fractals are, how to draw a few common fractals, and essentially what I wanted sort of to emphasise is fractals have self similarity. That means at different scales. Uh, you can zoom into a fractal, it'll look like the whole fractal itself. So a classic, classic example is this broccoli here, uh, Romanesco broccoli. I've never seen this in the supermarket, but uh, there you go. Okay, if I was to have, take that floret there, okay, just that one, that looks like the whole broccoli itself. And on this little floret, you've got these little, I don't know what they're called, little spike things, that also looks like the whole broccoli. So that's an example of... Um, self similarity and we saw on Monday okay uh, cancel set uh, we looked at some common fractals for example Cox snowflake which is just generated by adding a equilateral triangle to each length each uh, line and if you keep doing that over and over again uh, we get this okay this is self similar if I was to if I was just to take this top sort of edge here Okay, um, that all of that top edge looks like that little bit there, which in turn looks like that little bit. And if I was to keep zooming in, they'd all look like each other. Okay, and the classic fractal which we looked at, if I zoom right through, is the Mandelbrot set, which is very famous. I'm sure you've seen this before or prior to Monday. Okay, so that's the Mandelbrot set. That's generated using a very simple set of rules. Take a complex number, square it, add the complex number, keep doing that. If the modulus becomes greater than two, uh, it's escaped. If it remains bounded, it's, uh, it's in the Mandelbrot set, which is drawn using these black pixels there. Okay, and we also looked at sort of zooming in. So if I zoom into portions of this image, regenerate the Mandelbrot set and for example we have mini Mandelbrot sets little baby ones somewhere in there and you can keep zooming in on that one and you can go pretty much go forever or until the uh, until your computer in, uh, becomes uh, the, ac the accuracy of your computer sort of starts to um, ruin the image okay so that's what we looked at on uh, Friday uh, sorry on Monday what we're going to look at in this lecture now is the idea of randomly generating terrain. If we, um, if those of you who've played computer games or modern games, uh, the world or the virtual world of a computer game tends to be quite large now. I mean, there's a few titles in the last few years where you get to wander across a whole sort of landscape, a whole country. Now, it's not possible for the designers of that virtual world to um, sort of to define each elevation, each polygon that makes up the landscape. So what we do is we uh, design landscape generators, and this uses fractals and uses a property of fractals, i.e., self-similarity. Okay, um, why does this work? Well, terrains such as mountains and valleys have a self-similar. So, for example, if you look at a mountain. Okay, it has the sort of characteristic mountain shape. If you had to zoom in on one sort of uh, outcrop of that mountain and blow it up, it also looks like a mountain. If you to zoom in at a rock, blow it up, that also looks like a mountain. So it has this self um, similarity. And we're going to look at three methods which we can use to generate uh, landscapes. And the first one, it's most quite uh, it's the most simple one it's called the midpoint displacement algorithm and this is designed to draw um, sort of 2d landscape I've, I've, well I'm going to use 2d and 1d by 1d I mean we start with a line okay so I'm going to call it a 1d landscape but you end up with um, a flat sort of um, a, a, a mountain which is drawn 
on a 2D plane. So I'm going to call it a 1D because that's what you start with. You start with a line. Okay, and the midpoint displacement algorithm, what you do is you have a line, calculate the midpoint of the line. Okay, so line has a start and end. You calculate the, the coordinates of the middle point. So, for example, for the y coordinate, okay, if the midpoint is y subscript i plus a half, then the midpoint is a half of yi plus yi plus one. So, in other words, you, you're averaging the coordinate. So, you calculate that midpoint. Now, what you do is you move the vertical coordinate up or down by a little amount. Okay, so displace the vertical coordinate of the midpoint by some random amount. Um, that random amount um, is random, but it's not arbitrary. It has to exist in this range. So you have some minimum value of the range and some maximum value. Okay, so you, you displace the coordinates. So you move it up or down a bit. Okay, so let's say R is that random amount. So then you just add uh, R to Y add r to the midpoint and then you reduce the range of values that that displacement can take okay so r max r min okay let's say these were minus one and one okay so your random number can be between minus one and one if you were to reduce the range for example half r min and half r max the next time you do the random number it will be between minus a half and plus a half if you half it again, it'll be minus a quarter plus a quarter. So that R value for each iteration gets smaller and smaller and smaller. Okay, so if you keep doing that, eventually you'll get what should be sort of semi-recognizable as either it's going to be a mountain or it might be a valley shape. Okay, so this is what I mean. Okay, so we start off with a flat line at n equals 1, uh, sorry, n equals 0, that's your, your initialized line. Calculate the midpoint, and let's say we move it up a bit. Okay, so we've moved the midpoint up a bit. So now we've got two lines. Okay, so one line going up, one line going down. So for each of these new two lines, each of these lines, calculate the midpoint. For example, there'll be a midpoint around that there, which is here, and then randomly displace it move it up or down. Okay, so for example, we could move this point up and this point down. Okay, so now we've got four lines. So each of those four lines, find a midpoint, move them up or down by a little bit. And we could do that here. And if I go much further, you won't be able to see whether I've moved it up or down. Okay, so that's what we mean by the midpoint displacement algorithm. Now at this stage, what I want, I've got a little um, activity for you to do. Okay, so hopefully you've all got a coin with you. Okay, by that I mean I don't want, I don't, I'm not expecting the names to call, but you need some way to randomly determine whether you need to put that. Okay, so I'm reaching into my pocket. I just need some way to randomly determine whether we move up or down. So I found a coin. Okay, so having a look at this activity. Oh, zoomed in a bit far. Okay, so straight away, what we're going to do is we're going to draw a fractal landscape on this grid. Okay, and as you notice on the grid, I've put a very, very faint line. So to start with, okay, I've said, okay, the mid first midpoint is going to get displaced up to this point here. 
Okay, so I'm just going to put a mark there. Okay, so I'm assuming I've already done one. The reason I did that is because I wanted to create a mountain. Because if you, if you start randomizing, it might have created a valley. I just wanted the first one to be up there. Okay, so what we're going to do is going to apply the midpoint here. First vertical displacement is 24, which is that point. And st all other displacements, okay, I've deliberately chosen the, um, this range. Okay, your number is going to be 6 times T. T is your to coin toss. If you go heads, it's 1, minus 1 if tails. So first thing I've got is halfway between 0 to 16 is 8. So I've got a midpoint at that point there. Okay, well, I'm going to toss my coin. I've got heads. So at this point, okay, if I've started there, I'm going to go 6 times plus 1 because my T was 1. So I'm going to go 6 plus 12 is 18. So I'm going to put a mark there. Okay, whatever your coin toss was, okay, if it was tails, the midpoint was 12, so you'd go down to 6 in the vertical height. Okay, we have another midpoint here. Halfway between 16 and 32 is 24. Okay, do a coin toss. That came up tails. So at this point, I'm going to go down by 6, which is to 12 minus 6 is obviously 12. So I've got a point there. Okay, so that was my first midpoint, that was my second. Now I've got four midpoints to calculate. So halfway between 0 and, and 8 is 4, and I've got a and halfway between 0 and 18 is 9. So my midpoint is at 4, 9. Okay, I'm going to toss my coin, and i get heads. So I'm going to go up again. But this time, I'm going to halve the range. Okay, the previous range was six. This time, I'm only going to go up by three. So where was my midpoint? We said it was at four nine. So if I go up by three, I'm at four twelve, which is there. Okay, uh, a midpoint between these two. So halfway between 8 and 16 is 12. Halfway between 18 and 24 is 21. So I'm starting at 12, 21. Flip a coin. I get tails. So I'm going to subtract 3 from 21 to give me 18. So I'm at a point there. Okay. Midpoint between 24 and 16 is, um, what is it, 20, sorry, yeah, thank you, and halfway between 6 and 24 is 15, so that's my midpoint, toss my coin, I'll get heads, so I'm going to go up 3 from this point here, so, oh, just so happens that I'm I'm on that first line, but that's just a fluke. Okay, and you keep going on. I've got one last one to do. So midpoint uh, between 24 and 32 is 28. Halfway between 6 and 0 is 3. So I'm at 28, 3. And my coin cost was tails, so that goes down to 0. Okay, so now we have 8 midpoints to calculate. And move up and down. I've got one there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And this time I'm going to move them up and down by one and a half. Because my initial displacement was six. Then I halved it. Three. Now I'm going to halve it again. Okay, so I've got tails on the first one. So if I move move it down by one and a half, six minus one and a half is four and a half, so I'm there. Uh, my second coin toss is ahead. 
So find the midpoint, which is around about there, plus one and a half, which gives me that point there. And keep going. Heads again. Heads again. Heads. Oh, three heads in a row. What were the chances? Sorry? Nope. What did you say? One in three? Oh, one over eight. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, you did that about right. Yeah. Tails. Okay, so... Every time calculating the midpoint heads, so I go up to about there. And we can keep going if we want and tails. So this one's actually beneath, so like a negative value there. Okay, I'm going to stop at that point. You could have carried on doing the same thing for the next midpoint, half, one and a half to give 0.75 and carry on. At this point, I'm now going to join the dots. Quite roughly. Looks a bit odd, but that's my fractal mountain. So that's a midpoint displacement algorithm. Calculate the middle, randomly move the midpoint up or down by a particular value. Now, in order of these values, the one I've just done, they're all the same. So I, I either moved up three or down three, or up six or down six. In practice, you sample from a random, you sample from a range. So you have a random number in the range. So rather than plus six and minus six, I'd have it sampled from uh, somewhere between plus and minus six. Okay, so that's midpoint displacement algorithm. Okay. Um, <coughs> how much you move your midpoint up or down or depend on how smooth you want your um, landscape. Sometimes you want a jagged landscape. Let's say if you want a rough sort of mountainous terrain, you want it quite jagged. Well, you want to move your um, R, you want your R value to be quite, quite large. If you want a smooth landscape, let's say you've got some like hills or fields or some low-lying areas, you'll want your R to be quite small. Okay, so this gives us an idea of a roughness parameter. Okay, so um, if R is the random displacement at iteration N, then for example, R1 may be somewhere in the range minus one to plus one, R2 could be minus a half to plus a half, etc. What we can do is we can change that range. Okay, and we can use this uh, expression here. So the range I mean, this is just arbitrary. You, you can choose what range you want. But one such range could be 2 to the power minus 2 times n, which is your iteration number, times h. Now, big H is in the range 0 to 1. It's like a little sort of um, like a tuning uh, parameter. Okay, so think of like a volume switch. When h is 0, you've got a very rough terrain incredibly jagged terrain. When H is close to 1, you'll have a very smooth terrain. When H is at a half, halfway between the two. Okay, so for example, if H is equal to 0 0.5, okay, so then the range is equal to 2 to the power minus N. So in other words, your range is halved each time. If H is equal to 0, then your range is always 1. So you're always sampling between the same range. If h is equal to 1, then the range is equal to 2 to the power minus 2n. And the range is quartered at each iteration. Okay. Um, using this, we can actually determine that the fractal dimension is 2 minus h. Okay. So when h is 0, you've effectively got a plane. 
because you've got incredibly jagged. If you keep going forever, it will fill the plane. When h is equal to 1, you've effectively got a line. And what I've done here is I've generated, these are the same random number. I generated the same random numbers, but I changed the range. Okay, so when h is equal to 0.2, you've got quite a jagged terrain. Okay, when h was a half, it's a bit smoother. And when h is 0.8, it's pretty smooth. Okay, so, th so that h gives you some control over how rough you want your terrain. Okay, um, one thing I want to show you here, and this is um, linked to your assignment. Okay, is the, in your assignment, I want you to be able to draw a two-dimensional um, fractal landscape. This is a 1D fractal landscape. Okay, um, by 1D, I mean we're starting with a straight line. Okay, um, so this is the code, as you can see here. Uh, I've chosen a roughness parameter of 0.5. Okay, nmax is how many iterations I'm going to continue the... Uh, the generation for this length <coughs> is linked to n max because I'm finding the midpoint at each iteration. The number of values I have in my start at my array or what I'm going to end up with is linked to n max. Okay, so two to the power n max plus one. So if n max is five, I'm going to end up with 33 values. So one at each end and 31 in between. Okay. Uh, a step is simply starts off with being 2 to n max. Okay. That step is, okay, how much um, do I have to add on to the first node in my array to get to the last node? And I also need half step. And that half step helps me to calculate the midpoint, which is just step divided by 2. Okay, initialize your X and Y array. So I've got an X array going from zero up to length. So my first value of X is zero, second value is one, third, uh, third value is two, et cetera, et cetera. My 33rd value will be 32. So it's similar to what we've just done on this activity and why I've set to zeros to start with. Okay, perform the iterations. Calculate the range, okay, that's uh, using our expression. Calculate the midpoint, okay, so this is a, requires a little bit of nifty sort of use of a for loop. So what this does is I, or starts at one, goes up in increments of step up to length minus step. Okay, so step to start with is... 2 to the power 5, which is 32. Now, the, the midpoint will be the node i plus half step. Okay, so a step starts at 32, and i is 1. Half step 16, so the 17th node will be your midpoint node. Okay, and all you do is you average the y coordinate for the node i to the node to the left, which is i, and the node to the right, which is i plus step. Okay. So that calculates the halfway point. Okay. This thing here, okay, this calculates the random number. Now, rand, R-A-N-D, is a random number in the range 0 to 1. So if I go, if I show you, for example, if I just type rand, it just gives me a number in the range 0 to 1. Okay, I want that number to be in the range minus one to plus one. So what we can do is if I say two times rand, that's a number in the range zero to two. But if I subtract that from one, this gives us a number between minus one and plus one. So you can see if I keep calculating all those random numbers, it's in the range minus one to plus one. So that one minus two times rand is essentially a random number between minus one and plus one. Multiply that by my range, that gives you how far up and down 
if you move uh, your Y coordinate. Okay, half the step for the next iteration. Half step, half half step. Okay, and what I've done here is I've plotted the current uh, landscape. So if I run this program, okay, you can see, okay, there's that landscape generated. So the first point in this one happened to be negative. So it's given me like a valley. If I do it again, again, it's negative. I mean, this is totally random. I've got no sort of control over what my random numbers are. And if you keep doing that, okay, you, you can generate all sorts of random terrain. One thing we can do is let's have a look at the roughness parameter. Let's set it to be very rough. So let's say zero. Okay, well, as you can see, it's gone off my range of uh, my axis. So if I increase that a little bit, so it's incredibly rough terrain. Alternatively, let's say if we've got one, we'll end up with a very smooth terrain. Okay. Um, I can increase the number of iterations. Let's go to eight. So you get a higher resolution. Okay. As you can see, each of those midpoints are then being calculated, and the last iteration just joins them all up. Okay, so this is uh, what we call the 1D displacement or midpoint displacement method. And as you can see there, that's just one. I mean, all of these are random. You can't recreate one after you've made it. Okay, so <coughs> that's 1D. So that creates a mountain. In the virtual worlds, we exist in 3D, so we want to create a foot surface. Okay, so the 2D, so-called because we start with a flat plane, uh, is essentially the extension of that. So the 2D one, okay, if you start with a plane, okay, the corners of your plane or your square, you calculate the midpoints between the corners, okay, these gray circles here, move them up and down by a random amount, and then you calculate this middle point, which is the average of the gray points, and then move that up and down by a random amount. Okay, so this is just extend, oh, excuse me, extending the 1D method to 2D. So the midpoints along the edges, which are the gray circles, is simply, there's four of them. Okay, so you calculate a half um, of all of the black, halfway between the black circles move them up and down by the random amount r then the center point is simply a quarter times the gray circles added together and then moved up and down by random amount r that's your assignment okay so you've got to go from this code uh, here it's about generates wrong but go from this code which just does it in 1d to this code here which does it in 2D. Notice, I'm not going to show you much. I'll show you down to there. Notice, I've started with very similar parameters. X and Y arrays, okay, because we're dealing with a 2D surface. I said, okay, X is the lin space, which means give me an array from 0 to 1 um, with length is going to be the length of the array. Okay, so, and I set Y equal to be be equal x x comma y equals mesh grid that just calculates two 2d arrays x and y just allows me to plot it okay and if i was to zoom if i was to go down it will give the game away a bit too much so that's the assignment 12 if i run this code you can see it creates a 2d surface sort of a and I could sort of zoom around this if I want. So this is a 2D surface. Uh, if I slow it down a bit, just give me one second. Don't want to give the game away. Okay, what I'm going to do here is slow it down a bit.
Okay, so I'm going to run that again just to show, show you what I, I see. Uh, so there's first, okay, so every, uh, after every um, iteration, okay, so I think there are six, n max is six, so two to the power six is 64. So there are 64 by 64 squares in the initial, um, that's your initial uh, sort of um, square. There's 64 by 64 in there. Okay, so each of these midpoints, so for the first iteration, it's just going to be the midpoints halfway along the edges. Uh, promise you'll look away right now. Yeah, you didn't see any of that, did you? Right, okay, so it's calculated the midpoint along the edges, and it's calculated as the center midpoint. So now I'm going to have the midpoints a lot halfway between the center and the corners. Okay, move them up and down a bit, and also calculate the center one. Keep doing it. So as you go higher and higher in the iterations, you get more and more sort of spikes. Okay, if I keep going... Eventually, you end up with your um, landscape. So that's your that's your landscape. Okay, so that's random, la randomly generated fractal landscape. And uh, that one's not bad actually. It looks sort of sort of like a mountain as you sort of zoom around it. Okay, what happens if we alter the um, alter the roughness parameter? Let's set it quite low. Okay, so this is a roughness parameter set quite low. Oop, that looks horrible. Uh, okay, so there's my landscape. Very, very jagged. Probably not really much use, not, not recognizable as a landscape. What if I was to set it to be quite high? So let's say 0.8. You can see quite a smooth landscape. Okay, so that's the 2D midpoint displacement. We do have a problem here. If I go and set it again to be... Uh, um, 0.5 and after a while after you've done a few of these you start to notice creases forming okay things uh, it's not really an obvious one on there but you'll start to notice it's not as random as you want it to be okay you start to notice patterns in the fractal okay and this is where what we call the diamond square algorithm comes in Now, so the main disadvantage of the 2D midpoint displacement is that ridges are visible in the final landscape. Okay, so that's to do with the initial sort of perturbations. Okay, to get around this, we use what's called a diamond square algorithm. And this is best sort of illustrated by the, um, these um, diagrams. What we have is your black nodes are your known values. So to start with, these are corner. You calculate the average of all four corner nodes, calculate the midpoint, move it up and down. That's called the um, diamond step, because if you draw dashed lines, it, looks, it forms diamonds. The square step is calculating this node over here and this node down here. The square step is the midpoint between two adjacent center nodes, and you move it up or down a bit. But if you're on the edge, so let's say this is the far left edge of your um, landscape. This node is borrowed from the other end. Okay, it's what we call wrap around. So the procedure for, for the diamond square algorithm, calculate the midpoints in the center. So it's just a quarter times the corner midpoints plus R. The square step, calculate the midpoints along the edges. Okay. Actually, that should be a half, by the way, sorry. Slight error there. So that should be a half rather than a quarter, plus R. The square step for the nodes on the far left and bottom edges are calculated using this. Now, what this is, is it's borrowed a node from the top edge. So if this is the bottom edge, okay, we borrow a node from the top and the right edge. So we sort of wrap around. So your actual landscape can actually go on forever. If you can wrap it around, it's continuous. Okay, the square step for the nodes on the right and upper edges assume the same values 
the nodes on the left and bottom. So what I mean by that is this is the left and bottom edge. Okay, these white circles we can calculate. The values of the nodes at the far top and far right just take on the values of those. So that node there, if that's the far right, is equal to that node. And I've got a MATLAB program to do this. Where is the... Oh, I haven't... Uh, Blank that for a sec. For some reason it's not... Ah, okay, I've got a few pressing F5 a little too much. Right, I can go off blank now. Okay, so if I look at a diamond square, okay, so these, the middle one was calculated first, average of the four corner ones, and then the, the square step, so this one is an average of that one, wrap around, so it must be that one itself, up and down a bit. So if I go to the next stage, okay, this one here is an average of this node, this node, this node, and this node, moved up and down a bit. This one here is an average of that one and this one over here, if you wrap around. This one is an average of that one and that one. Okay, This one over here is just an average of those two. Okay, So it's a diamond square is slightly more complicated because you have to do what we call wrapping around. Okay, And if you keep doing that, that's your um, terrain generated using a diamond square method. The diamond square method actually gives you a better terrain. It gives, it's a lot less... Um, Angular, okay, it looks more random. But what I've noticed, and what a few other people have noticed, is you start to get these sort of spikes. Can you see that one there? Okay, so uh, as of yet, I'm not sure how to get about that, how to uh, combat that. There doesn't seem to be much sort of uh, discussion in the area. So sometimes you get those spikes, sometimes you don't. So if we do another one, okay. You can see there's some more spikes there. But that's your diamond square method. Okay, the last thing we could do to improve it. Okay, how do we improve it? Add color. Okay, landscapes aren't white. Okay, so, and generally speaking, terrain is colored determined by height. So, at the very high mountains, you'll have snow on the mountains, then you may have gray rock. Then you'll have trees as you go further down. Then you'll have grass. Then you'll have beaches and sea and things like that. So you can add color depending on the height of your landscape. Atmospheric effects, fog, uh, sky, clouds, sun, shadow, light, etc. Okay, so what I've done there is I've done a little rudimentary sort of height color map. So I've got, for example, snow on the peaks. Then I've got some mountains, some greenery, and then I've colored the bottom bit blue to sort of try and mimic sort of water. Okay. Uh, another thing you could do with these landscapes is if I was to look straight down onto that landscape there, it looks like that. If I was to apply a grayscale color map, I get this. And that's how we get fog. So clouds and fog can be calculated using the same methods. It's just a fractal landscape, looking down on it, and we color the pixels or we color it depending on whether it's high or low. And it gives us some realistic looking fog. Okay, so um, the ones I've done are fairly basic. Uh, if quick Google search, let's have a look at some eye candy. 
Okay, all of these, for example, are done using random terrain generators. Okay, and obviously we've got things like we've got a texture map for grass applied here, some lighting. There you go, that's another random generator. So you can see it gives you kind of an outline of the coast or something like that. Uh, any other eye candy? This one slightly more sort of looks unrealistic. But yeah, so you can, that's exactly how they're doing it. Somebody's done something in Minecraft there. Yeah, I mean, that looks a bit more like one of mine. Uh, this one's done using the midpoint displacement algorithm. You can see we're getting sort of creases. It's obvious that this, you know, this shouldn't really be like this. It's not, it doesn't look realistic. So that's the one of the drawbacks of midpoint displacement. And there's a, lots of eye candy online. You can have a look. Okay, so your assignment 12. Uh, okay, right at the bottom. Okay, write a MATLAB program. Use the midpoint displacement algorithm to generate three-dimensional fractal landscape. So in other words, I want something like that. Okay, second part, apply a height-based color map. So all I've done here is uh, sort of green for low-line areas, gray for <coughs> upper areas. And you could also apply a plane, like a semi-transparent plane to look like it's water. Okay, if you really uh, want to go the extra mile, the additional part, it use a diamond square algorithm. Okay. And on Moodle, I've given you the basic code for the uh, 1D landscape there. So you can, you can use that as a basis to build your 2D landscape. Okay, then, and that concludes uh, essentially the whole unit. From here on in, we'll be just be doing uh, revision. Are there any questions about that lecture today. No one? Okay, I'm sure I'll have questions in the tutorial. <laughs>